We have a complex week full of planetary transits. In this week's astrology, Mercury is retrograding back into Leo, causing us to review the period between July 16th to 25th. There's a Yod pattern that's present, which can result in moments of confusion concerning which path to take. Mars and Saturn will form an aspect that may rev up our edgy side. And it's an ultra active week for Mercury, Mars, and Pluto transits, causing us to work on our interactions with others, mindset issues, taking initiative, focus, control, and our temperament. With a weird and rough week like this, the vibes on the graph are showing a mix of these energies. Ambitious vibes along with good luck will be dominant energies up until the 17th. Because this week is complex, we're going to feel motivated to address long-standing issues. But not only that, sometimes with energy like this, luck could be on our side with certain things. And because we're feeling more encouraged than typical, we may land on some fortunate opportunities. Also, this energy will be intersecting solitude until the 17th, plus some romantic tones from the 14th to the 16th. So we've got some clashing energies going on. I mean, this week has some rough spots to it, but it definitely has has some moments where, you know, again, we may be feeling like luck is on our side because of all the Jupiterian energy and the Mars energy, minus the Mars-Saturn square. But for the most part, we may still have our moments where we're comfortable with interacting with people and then need some space to ourselves to sort our shit out and figure out what's going on because it's a very complex week. So a little space just to decompress can't hurt us. So yeah, here we are in the middle of August and the tones are edgy as hell. Let's look at these next bunch of days and see what we can expect. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps this channel grow. Also, if you're looking for a natal chart reading or intuitive coaching, the links will be in the description box below. And if you'd like to support the work of this channel, you could do so by buying me a fresh cup of coffee. The link will be in the description box below as well. Throughout this week, and also some of these energies have been mounting since last week, we've got some interesting stuff occurring with Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, which can make us feel out of sorts in some sort of way. And I say in some sort of way because on one hand, we do have some focus and drive and ambition and even a lot of confidence in certain areas with this Mars-Jupiter situation. And also Jupiter and Pluto have been connecting in a sesqui quadrate as well, and that can rev up overconfidence. However, having all of these energies combined with a square to Saturn can really put a sting in the air. And not that the Jupiter-Pluto situation can't either. I covered that last week and it's a vibe that could be quite polarizing in its own right. So with all of these combinations, we really need to be aware of ourselves. We really need to be aware of ourselves, especially in terms of acting out due to an edgy mood, especially with the Mars sesquiquadrate Pluto situation and Jupiter still being there in that sesquiquadrate due to their slow motion. It can really cause us to blow things out of proportion. Also with energy like this, it tends to unearth issues we thought were resolved and have been festering for some time. So anything that might have felt suppressed or any attitudes or feelings may end up rearing its ugly head with energy like this. This can happen on a collective level, especially with our outer planets really being active at this point, but also on a personal level. So this could be a period where we're seeing a lot of angst, especially of the unresolved kind. Anything that we might have been frustrated about, anything that might have been building up can really bubble over to the surface and very unpleasantly with this combination. Other things that also come up with all this angsty energy is our temperaments. Our temperaments may be more flared up than typical, resulting in power struggles, dealing with pushy people, confrontational stuff, bickering. I definitely have to warn that there's definitely a lot of hostile energy when it comes down to this, so there can be moments where things get pretty brutal in energy like this. So it's something to definitely be aware of. Another way this can manifest with this Mars-Pluto scenario is situations with relationships and passion and intimacy. Sometimes it can rev up bedroom antics, and sometimes it can rev up situations with unconstructive relationships. So if there's a relationship that has a lot of toxicity to it and there's been some unaddressed behavior going on, this could really bubble up to the surface and become very uncomfortable. So with this situation with Mars and Pluto and Jupiter being involved and also Saturn and Jupiter, which is coming up to its square, we really need to channel some of this energy properly. And by channeling it properly into physical activity, into something like burning up 
all this excess energy and exerting it properly. And again, that can be physical fitness, that could be cleaning your house or getting fixated on a complex project or task and doing it properly because energy like this also helps us get really ambitious. And if we direct the energy properly, we can direct this energy on any activity that seemed way too complex for us. With the situation with Mars making this conjunction with Jupiter on the 14th, this energy is mixed bag because it's a conjunction. It's also starting a new phase between Mars and Jupiter. And so we have some favorable stuff. This is where we were seeing a lot of that good luck energy. Also, again, Jupiter is being activated like hell. And so it's going to light up some of its positive qualities, but it's also going to rev up some of its not so positive qualities, along with Mars as well in terms of the energies it's getting this. So even though there's a bit of restriction in the air, we'll still feel motivated to take advantage of our options. In other words, if there has been something we want to shoot our shot at, the urge to do that is going to be more potent. It's going to be more pronounced. And that real urge to start something fresh is going to be stronger than typical because this is a conjunction. Conjunctions are like new moons where we look at the new possibilities that we can add to our lives and any positive qualities that we can adopt from these energies. And so we might feel more inspired than typical to take action towards our far-reaching goals and also the things we're curious about because both of these planets are in Gemini. So it's about exploring all the things that we're fascinated about. And again, this has some higher expressions and lower expressions. Typically when this alignment is going on, we don't have so many hits going on to Mars and Jupiter. The last time we had a Mars-Jupiter conjunction was May of 2022. And it was in the sign of Aries and it did have some explosiveness because of that and for those reasons. And this one has a kick to it because of the aspects it's making with Mars and Jupiter to the Saturn situation and the Pluto situation. But in its higher form, this is gonna motivate us to go after our goals and take an ambitious stance in our lives. So we'll feel like we have more audaciousness to really shoot our shot because we're feeling fired up and we're wanting to fulfill the things that we truly desire for our next chapter, this new chapter that we're trying to start within Mars and Jupiter energy. So this can truly start a stage where we broaden our perspectives and start a new path that's, that allows us to take new heights. So for this reason, we'll feel this burst of energy to take initiative in our lives. Because these planets are in Gemini, it could be a time to focus on our social game and improve our communication style because overall, we're craving more interactions with others. And so we may take this time to get more social in the sense of having fun, exploring cool things with the people we really care about in our immediate environment, whether that be some of our close friends, whether that be relatives, because with Gemini, we deal with a specific type of relative. Sometimes this could be siblings. Sometimes this could be cousins, aunts and uncles, and having more interaction with those people. This could really highlight taking advantage of what our town has to offer and doing fun things in our city, scoping out the scene, going to places that we normally don't go to, but we've wanted to for a long time because we're curious and we're ready to explore how it looks and the kind of stimulation we get for exploring new things and venues and other areas of our town. Or it might be a time to consider finding a local area that aligns to your soul better because not everyone is in the local environment that they want to be. Not everyone is in the city that they want to be. So this may be a time to consider, you know, taking a new path in terms of moving to a place that's more aligned with your soul. Another thing we can initiate with this energy is looking for mental stimulation. Sure, we can get the stimulation and build new neural pathways by exploring other areas of our city, but this also could be mental stimulation in terms of learning things. Maybe this might be a time where you're looking to go back to school or start a certification program or start college. But overall, it could be a time to really immerse yourself in learning on a collective level. This may usher in a new era in terms of programs for school and education or the education system overall. So this could be a time to really search for the truth and just go on a knowledge fest, an all-out knowledge fest overall. Energy like this is also excellent for overcoming obstacles. It's excellent for overcoming what's been preventing us from taking that leap and doing something with our lives, taking action on the things that we really want. So this could trigger a new phase in your life where you're seeking out options that lead to fortunate events. 
And of course, there's a lower expression to this, and it may feel more inflated because of the contacts to Saturn and Pluto and what Mars is doing to Saturn and Pluto and what Jupiter is doing to Saturn and Pluto. And them all combining together, this integration can definitely feel intense at some points in time when we're experiencing this energy. Like I was saying earlier, really truly be aware of blowing things out of proportion in this energy because things tend to get blown up to the maximum and they're not as intense intense as they might seem. I'm not saying that there won't be intensity because there will and there are some intense things, but there might be a tendency going on for this next few weeks of taking the little things to a whole new level and blowing them out of proportion and it leading to flare ups, it leading to disagreements, leading to aggressive behavior. So we definitely need to be aware of that. Shit gets inflated when we have Jupiter energy and with Jupiter making some harsh contacts to the other planets and Mars combined, Mars being an activating point, this can end end up just being very much out of sorts. And even if it isn't bickering energy or temperament energy, sometimes there's a little bit of unrealistic energy in this. And so we need to be grounded as possible, especially if we have data presented to us and facts that are rooted in truth rather than our opinions or beliefs. Overconfidence is also another issue that comes up with energy like this. And so we need to be aware of being too egoic and too self-assured. And, you know, again, on its own, if this was by itself without all this extra activation, then I would say, yeah, having that confidence is helpful because we do take risk in energy like this. At the same time, with some of the stuff going on, you want to make sure your risks are calculated. And if something is not ready for you, really, truly take your time because it can result in mishaps and something you didn't intend. And with this energy too, with it being in Gemini and Mars activating some of these points, we really need to be aware of gossip, fibbery, or anything that seems misleading, misleading information and other forms of salaciousness because energy like this can really blow something out of proportion yet again and maybe something isn't true or more or less just nasty rumors being spread about something, someone, a situation, or a topic at hand. And so with all of these energies combined and Mars and Saturn making this square on the 16th, this is going to set off a period of opposite motivations. And what I mean by that is Jupiter is in that sesquiquadrate with Pluto for a while. Jupiter and Saturn are going to be squared for a while. And Mars is coming through and it's going to go make its rounds and set off some energy. And I say set off some energy not in a scary way or a chaotic way, but Mars is an activator. And so Mars coming to this point and making this conjunction with Jupiter while it's squaring Saturn and sesquiquadrate to Pluto, it can really rev up all of this intensity and set off a trigger point. Of course, next week when we have this square going on with Jupiter and Saturn, I will talk more in depth about that. But for now, with Mars coming here, it's going to really set the stage for some opposite energies coming into play that may feel very tense and may feel like a tug of war at times. There's definitely a lot of opposite motivations. And so this can really really push through a lot of polarizing energy and an emphasis of my way versus your way. So with Mars and Saturn in a square, it tends to enunciate situations where we need to wait before we do anything. We need to wait before we act because any type of risky behavior, any type of carelessness, any type of, you know, pushing your luck and leading your way now, now, now tends to not go over well in this time. There are just times in life, there are times astrologically where we do need need to wait for something. Currently, we are in that period, especially with these squares and a Mercury retrograde. And so energy like this can tend to blow up in our face if we're being too pushy, if we're stepping on people's toes, if we're demanding something that may be ours at some point, but we just need to wait maybe a few more weeks, maybe a few more months, and we have that thing guaranteed. If we push past that and want it immediately, it can have some serious adverse effects that we don't want. And then now the thing that we were supposed to get is no longer ours and may or may be postponed later on. Also, maybe we aren't being impatient. Maybe it's a situation where someone else is throwing their weight around and making us wait for something. And so it could feel like a tug of war because of that. And it could feel very frustrating because of that, because ultimately they have the authority and we don't. So energy like this tends to have a more domino effect with those who have more power. So those in a higher authority, and this could be anyone such as a boss, 
boss, a parent, someone influential. It can put us on pause or it could put something on hold, maybe because again, it may not be ready. Sometimes things aren't malicious or done nefariously. Although in this energy, that could be the case in this situation. Or yes, a carrot might be being dangled over someone's head and they're having to wait until the coast is clear or something's clearing up so that way they can get what they need. But overall, regardless of the situation, this is a very frustrating energy because you're having to bide your time until the right moment. And I will say with Mars Saturn situations, eventually we do get what we want. We just have to wait a little longer. Something is just postponed and we're just unfortunately having to sit with it for that moment. And so from either side of the coin, we need to be aware of our tempers, but we also need to be aware of throwing our weight around with others. And again, Jupiter and Pluto are playing a role in all of this right now. So it can really feel power struggly. It could really feel as though there's a lot of entitlement going on. It can really blow up in our face if we're careless and we're not thinking about the consequences and just leaping head first with no thoughts. So, and mind you, we still have the rest of the week to get through with other colorful transits going on and one that happens to be favorable. But circling back to the 15th, Mercury is going to re-enter Leo on that day. So this is going to be a review point from July 16th to 25th. So all of this content that's going to be manifesting in the Leo portion is everything that was happening in the pre-shadow. As with Virgo, the Virgo section was definitely shorter than this Leo section. So this part's going to feel like we have a lot of ground to cover, especially these last two weeks of this retrograde cycle. We'll be reevaluating Leo thing. We'll be reevaluating being unique and expressing ourselves. It could be a time to not be afraid of improving our communication skills. It could be a time of recognizing that we deserve attention too without getting stressed out about being the center of attention. It could be a time of addressing issues where people try to dim your shine and by that people try to cause you to fade to the background rather than taking the credit for your hard work or anything else you deserve the spotlight for. Some of the other things we can be addressing through this is relationships that are a bit drab and needing more drama in it, healthy drama, or on the flip side relationships that have a lot of drama in it and we need to assess if it's worth our time anymore. It could be a period of getting creative. It could be a period of getting back into hobbies that we had before. It can also be a time of re-examining inner child work, caring for children and considering having children or not. So the need for any type of development on all these Leo topics is going to be pronounced because we're dealing with this portion of the retrograde. On top of that, there's a yacht that's going on and this involves more Plutonian stuff. Neptune and Pluto are in a perfect sextile as they've been for many, many decades. And with both planets in retrograde, they're coming to this point where they're hitting maybe a one degree sextile. But we have a retrograde Mercury at the base of this point. Mercury is at the apex point of this yacht. And so this is going to bring up a lot of blurry situations. And what I mean by blurry situations, situations that were over our heads, situations where, you know, we maybe we didn't have the awareness about it or we were oblivious about. Sometimes this can deal with working on a rude communication style, control issues, jealousy, pettiness, and other things that we might have repressed. And considering we've got that Mars-Pluto situation, things that we repress can definitely come up to the surface and come out sideways with energy like this. Also with this, it could be a time where we're having to accept the truth about things. We're having to get real about situations we've been in, in denial about for a while. And so energy like this can really feel intense, confusing, and also just draining in a lot of ways. Hopefully the most harmonious alignment that we have this week will help soothe some of these energies. We have a Sun trying Chiron situation going on, which should actually kick this retrograde that it's in into action. Anytime you have a trine with the sun and the outer planets, also Mars, it's a sign of the beginning phases of retrograde motion and also towards the end of the phase, the slowing down of that planet. And since Chiron went into retrograde at the end of July, this is kicking off the motion part of this regressive cycle. But energy like this will give us the push needed to take a constructive path when it comes down to ego issues. In 
other words, maybe it's a way to build our confidence in a healthy way rather than seeking validation in the most unconstructive way. So it's a period to really build up our self-esteem and self-assurance in the most healthiest way possible. Also, this could be a time where we're affirming ourselves more. This could be a time to get a pep talk from other people or you're doing that same thing for others where you're cheering someone else up and it's also causing you to feel good as well. So it really brings in a harmonious vibe. And so we might be looking on the bright side with energy like this and shedding things that cause us to undermine our own confidence. And hopefully we're feeling these energies the whole way through. We'll be feeling that Mars-Jupiter conjunction the whole way through even for some of the lower expressions because once we get to the 17th we've got another Plutonian sort of situation. Venus is going to be in a sesquic quadrate with Pluto as well and so this can uncover counterproductive behavior in relationships. This is really a week to look at things that we typically avoid and so energy like this can pronounce the need or more or less give us the nudge needed to look at situations that are unbalanced even if we're not wanting to stare them in the face. So it could be a time where we're actually reviewing the past and maybe it's because we're feeling triggered this week and we're starting to dwell or think of past situations and romance and looking at the disappointment of the situation and for what it really is and possibly addressing it. And it doesn't mean on this day we'll address it even though with a week like this and all the other transits and everything else that's going on with Pluto, it can really cause these situations to come to the surface and for us to take some action on them. And energies like this are brewing situations and with something that's been bubbling beneath the surface, when it finally does come out, it comes out sideways. And so we may react or start handling these situations from a jealous lens, a petty lens, a power struggly lens. So we need to be aware of that. But one of the things with this is anything that's long suppressed emotionally is just going to bubble to the surface and it, it increases the risk for confrontation for that reason. On a fun note, if you're in a constructive situation, this tends to manifest as deepening your bond, intensity, bedroom antics, and things like that. But for the most part, with a week like this, this could really feel icky. On top of that, once we get to the 18th, Mercury is going to form a square with Uranus, which it did back on July 21st. So anything that happened during that time is going to come up for review. Energy like this tends to bring in plot twist energy. So we'll be revisiting a lot of unpredictability that happened around that time. Maybe it's unpredictable conversations. Maybe it's hearing from someone we didn't expect to hear from or conversations where things just didn't go right or someone blurted out the wrong thing. Any type of miscommunication is going to come up for a review. Energy like this can also have us reviewing situations that didn't go as planned at that point in time and trying to make sense of it. So maybe we might come to an understanding why things suddenly became off kilter and our schedules just got jumbled up for whatever reason. Also with this, considering Uranus is going retrograde in a few weeks, Uranus is in pre-shadow, Uranus is stationing, and it's making this connection to Mercury retrograde, and so things might feel glitchy over these next few weeks on top of the other transits we have, but we're going to put Uranus in this category because Uranus is where we get the glitches. This is where we get the technological mishaps and scenarios that lead to unexpected disruption when it comes down to our electronics, gadgets, gizmos, doodads, and things like that. So things could feel pretty odd technologically with energy like this. This happens every Uranus retrograde, two weeks in, two weeks out of the retrograde, we feel these technological glitches. But because of Mercury being here, it's going to really rev that up more so than typical. So yeah, what a beefy week. What a weird week. And so do the best you can with these energies. It's tense, these next few weeks are going to be tense. And if possible, try to take the most constructive route you can if you have the luxury to. Sometimes that type of stuff is easier said than done. And that's why I say that the way I do, because sometimes people just don't have the luxury to react the way that they would prefer or to control situations that are out of their hands. So do your best, deep breath, try to practice patience and try your best to be mindful of your reactions when possible, if possible. Anyway, I hope you all have the most constructive week ever later and see you in the next episode.